be continuing our talks on uh, non-violence of Mahavir. Uh, non-violence is, is a difficult concept to understand if you look at it only from one angle. And the only angle we know is the not hurting animals or not hurting each other and things like that because our, our mind is what decides about the lectures or sermons which are given to us. And our interpretation is from the material point of view. So very subtle aspect of nonviolence escapes our understanding. Because the mind that is trying to understand is not at the level of Mahavir. So whenever we say not killing someone or not hurting someone, that is the most basic definition of Mahavir's nonviolence. Mahavir's nonviolence goes very deeper. So in last lecture we discussed why are we violent. So Mahavir says the reason we are violent is because of our lust for life. Our lust for life is the intense attachment to the life. And the intense attachment is there because of our desires. And the question was raised that why do we have desires? And what can we do if we don't have desires? What is the point if we don't have desires? The problem is we have lived whole our life only desiring things. Right from the time a child is born, he's told you have to be this, you have to be this, you have to be this. We automatically put the child into the future. Right from the child is born and he's growing up all throughout the life, he's made to visualize and have a dream of becoming something. Mm -hmm. Disregarding whatever he's having in front of him, the, the present is always, always overlooked. And the present, all the present moments keep on getting spent and spent and spent and spent. We say that time has passed. But the time is always there because time is always in the present moment. Because when we live in the future, we are thinking about the future moment. When one hour has passed, the time has stood still because every moment that comes in front of us is the present moment. It's never a future moment. But our mind is keeps rushing to the future. And that's why we keep missing the present moment. In fact, it should say that in one hour, the time has not passed, but we are passed away one hour. One hour less is available for us in this life. But we never realize the importance of staying in the present, so we always have desires. Desires always keep us in the future moment. And the desire is there because we have likes and dislikes. We have rag and dvesh. We like things, we hate things, we want to run away from things, we want to run towards the things. So Patanjali called this lust for life as a vinvesh. If you really look at it in a very subtle way, everybody speaks about the same thing, whether it is the Jesus or whether it's the Buddha or Mahavir or Krishna or Patanjali, it doesn't matter. Lao Tse had a good friend. He bought a cat and he wanted to name the cat. So he asked Lao Tse, what am I gonna name the cat? And cats are usually kind of very cunning animals. They're nature wise. So Lao Tse says, name your cat Ego. He says, Ego? What kind of name is that? It's a short, sweet, and it reflects the cunningness of the Ego. He says, what do you mean? He says, you will know. Come back in a month and you tell me how the cat is working out with you. So he can <coughs> name the cat Ego. The Ego is jumping around, jumping around. Sometimes he'll come when he's trying to rest, he's jumping on his chest, he goes outside, kills the mice, comes into the house with blood-stained hands and things like that. It makes a total mess in the guy's life. The life was very happy before the ego came into his, his life. But now the ego has destroyed his life completely. He's continuously running around, running around and running around. So the guy wants to get rid of him. So he comes back to Lao Tse. He says, I can't deal with this ego. Ego makes me run all the time. Ego never brings me happiness. Ego is really taking over my life. He says, you know what, <coughs> why don't you take Ego to the jungle and just make him get lost. So maybe he will never come back to your house and maybe he will leave you in peace. He says, okay. So the guy goes to the jungle and he tries to get rid of the, 
the ego, he puts him somewhere and then he thinks that the cat will not be able to find its way back. So he comes home and the ego is standing right there in the uh -huh. doorways. Even before he could make it back to the jungle, to his own house, the ego is back again. He, so he's asked Lao Tse. He says, take him into the deeper, deeper forest and like, take the right turn and left turn and east turn and west and all those things. And finally, just you have to go into the very deep jungle itself. He says, okay, I'm going to really try. He does that and does that and he finds all the nooks and crannies and all the trees and this and that. So he leaves the cat and he says, now the cat is not going to be able to find its way out. But as he turns around, he gets lost. He himself gets lost. Now he forgot what route he had taken. He says, what do I do now? So he's not even thinking. He says, what can I do? Lao Tse is not here to give me advice. So all he had to do is follow the steps of the cat. <laughs> the cat will know the way back to the house. So the ego finds its way back. So we are living the life of an ego. Ego somehow always finds the way back to our house, which is our body and the mind. It is not allowing us to find our soul. The ego is always in the way. That's why we cannot even think of the life without the desires. That's why we always keep on asking, what else is there? And that's the problem. So like Vijay Bhai says, whichever way you take, you have to find your nature. You cannot find your nature as long as your ego is alive. Ego means your likes and dislikes, suk and dukh, your concepts. So ultimately, we need to get rid of the ego. Now, ego is your own creation, so no one else can do it for you. So, Mahavir's method of reaching to a thoughtless state, egoless state, is the nonviolence. And it's a very profound method. And nonviolence is not just the message he gives and that you have to follow. Mahavir says, Do not follow me. You find your own Atma. And you cannot find your Atma just taking your Mahavir's words as blind words unless you actually go within. So Mahavir says, do not worship me and do not take my words, but find your own way. Buddha said the same thing, Appadipo Bhava, you find your own light. The guiding light is within us. The light is there, but it is all covered by the illusions of the ego. The clouds of the ego are covering it up. So the non-violence is a method that Mahavir has suggested. He says, why are we violent? And he made a main point of his own dharma. Your own dharma is your own true self. The self which is not modified by your vrittis and vasanas, which are corrupting our very pure, pristine divinity that exists within us, is, is clouded and it's made dirty, like a dirty water, and you put fatakri in there. You know fatakri? Mm -hmm. uh, you used to have all the dirt settled down and the pure water surfaces. That's how the non-violence, he says, is the main method that he has recommended to reach to your soul. And the non-violence, he says, for whoever was here in last lecture, he says, the lust for life, our intense desire for life is what is making us so blind that all we think that life has to give me something. Even when we run away from the sufferings, we think that life is real. We think life is real. The sansar which is out there, we believe is outside. Whenever we get attracted to whatever objects or persons or situation, we think it is their fault. Shastras and sastras are filled with how to go into the jungles, or how to go into the Himalayas, break your mind and do the exercises to walk away from. And that's exactly what Jain Munis are doing. Jain Munis are doing fastings. Mahavir fasted because he did not see any need. He did not want to depend on the life to give him the source. <coughs> For him, the source was not the life itself. Source was the soul. And when you reach to that source, the life as we know, it did not remain for him as a source of sustenance, source of pleasure, source of suffering. For him, it was like a toy, doll, that we talked in the past lectures. It's like the kids playing with the doll. When your doll is broken, 
and you take it to another friend, he's going to cry because he understands your suffering. But you take it to a mature person, he's going to laugh because he says, what are you talking about? This is just a doll. But we all live in that illusion and we're trying to appease our suffering by talking to each other. And Buddha said that I cannot make you happy. I want you to become a Buddha. Be alive, be alert, and look at the analyze, analyze the whole life that is in front of you. Life cannot make you happy. Life cannot make you unhappy. When the life is not that important, why are you looking for happiness or sufferings or blame the life for suffering? Either way, life is not that important. When the life does not become important, how is death important? Death is as important to you as the life is important to you. The, you raise the importance of the life at the simultaneously the importance of the death also becomes very important. So Mahavir says that more I have lust for my life in that blinded vision that I cannot reach to my soul and because I cannot reach to any action that I perform will be modified by my vruttis and vasanas. If somebody comes to me and asks for an advice, should I be a doctor or not? Obviously, I'm going to give him my perspective that as a doctor, I'm happy or not. But then he is going to be biased by my opinion. So the same way Mahavir says that when the lust for life is so strong, I'm going to fight death strongly also. And when I'm killing someone, I'm killing with the same idea that life is very important. If I kill you, you're not going to have life anymore. That's like me going in the, in, the, in the street and breaking the neck of a doll, of somebody else's doll. Really nothing has happened from the maturity point of view. But for that kid, that is the end of the world. The more attachment we have to the life, death becomes important. So by me trying to hurt someone, and the ultimate hurting I can do to someone is by killing someone because he cannot have life anymore because so far he was looking for the source of pleasures, a source of all the needs that he had was the life there is. And when I kill that person, I'm putting my violence to the max. But at the very subtle level, I am performing violence on a day-to-day -day basis. Maybe not so in a civilized society, we take away the killing part, but insulting someone, hurting someone, making jokes of someone, all those things. And even if you don't have a deeper intention to hurt someone, trying to make bigger than what you are, trying to look smarter than you are, trying to do the decorations and, and all those things, Halloween masks and <laughs> things like that, these are all masks we are wearing. When we try to buy the best possible dress, when we try to color everything and show us more than what we are, are all our attempts are all grouped under violence. Mahavir says that's violence because whenever you try to look better than somebody else, you also sit at a very subtle level trying to make somebody look worse than yourself. So Mahavir says this lust for life is an illusion. Life can never give you something that you've been looking for and that in one word is desires. In desires, what are we trying to desire? All the material objects which have their own cycles of birth, growth, decay, and death. No matter how much you hold on to it, it's losing its value right in front of you, and yet we keep on desiring it. So even that yoga mat you're sitting on, what is it? To you it looks solid, but at a scientific description says it's nothing but made out of molecules, and molecules are made out of atoms, and then subatomic particles, and these particles are going at the rate of 186,000 miles a second. There are just waving particles. To you, it looks solid. Buddha actually had given exact count of how many particles <coughs> it takes to make a human body. And scientifically, it has been proven correct, that it is nothing but swirling particles. And yet, we looking around, walking around, we thinking that this is solid. <coughs> so we are, have one concept after another concept after another. We are totally under the spell of Maya. We think yoga mat is hard. Then we're sitting here, we're thinking we are sitting and having a good time. We are moving at 67,000 miles per hour at the speed of Earth. We are continuously rotating. Just because we all rotate at the same time, 
So we think that there is nothing moving, but it is, right? And then, of course, the Earth is rotating around the Sun, and, it, and the Sun, of course, is rotating around the black hole. And it takes, you know... Universe. And the universe itself, the galaxies, are moving around, uh, away from each other. There is some spontaneous urja, like Vijay Bhai said, is coming from within. That uh, literally every point is the center of the universe because it's just exploding from within that Urja is pushing all the galaxies away. And that whole universe, we have no idea whether these universes are going towards something. So all these gatis that they call, we can still define and understand by the scientific experiments. But Mahavir and Buddha says there is another gati. All these add up to be the eight gatis they call. But the ninth gati is the Urja rising within that only you can tell. And that gati is the real importance of the human life because only humans can experience that. Animals, plants, trees, none of them have capacity to reach that level, only the human life. They said three things are the most rarest of all. And uh, one is manushatva, being a human life. Having a human life, a human body is not enough when, until we start taking this gati. Un until then, we are only synchronizing with the plants and animals. We are doing what anim everybody else is doing. We are reproducing, we are eating, we are defecating, and we are not going anywhere else. And we are bound under the laws of the motion. That's what science has described. But only when we take the gati, that's the ultimate manifestation of capacity of a human body and the human mind, is the manushatva. And after manushatva, after you have that, even that is not enough. Then you need <coughs> mumukshatva. Mumukshatva is to intense desire <coughs> to reach there. Just because you do yoga and meditation does not stop there. You have to have intense desire. Without intense desire, the going force is just not going to happen. No matter how many yogas you do or how many meditations you do, you're going to be exactly the same spot. And we keep on postponing because our desires take over. Our desires take over so that we still believe there is something in the life that we are missing. So when we meditate, we still keep on thinking. Our mind continuously stays active. And all our desires never let our mind become steady to realize the motion, the gati that is going on, the urja that is rising within us to all the chakras, ultimately to salsa and out somewhere to connect with the rest of the <coughs> consciousness is just not going to happen because that intense desire has to be more powerful than your thoughts. Right now the thoughts are powerful because our desires are powerful, our attachment to the, to the world is powerful. Even the body comes in the way. Every time we exercise our, our free wills, as America teaches, you can eat whatever you want and you can do whatever you want, you have all the freedom in the world. Every time we eat the wrong food, we catering to the desire of the body. <coughs> the gati is meant to rise above the body, above the mind, and up to the soul level. That's why I said vegan lifestyle is not enough. Vegan, you have to have a vegan mind. Because you may practice in veganism, but inside you still are desiring the vegan food, then you don't have a vegan mind. And who can have a vegan mind? You cannot have a vegan mind until you have vegan soul. Your soul has to be purified. To that level, your transformation has to go from soul to the mind <clears throat> to the body. Otherwise, you are not a vegan. You may be practicing veganism, but you are not a vegan. Yes? No, very well. Uh, right. So, Mahavir says, the internal transformation can happen only if you become non-violent. Because every time your desires are alive, and Mind well, no matter how much everything seems unlimited, unlimited of money you can make, unlimited, there is a limit how much you can make. And every time you acquiring more than you have, you're hurting someone else who needs more and he cannot have. So ultimately, anything performed at the material level is always a continuous fight and struggle. And if not at the physical level, at the mind level. So your expansion of your ego is keeping the cat in the house. You will never have a peace. 
And that's why we are suffering. And when there is peace, there is no suffering. And when there is suffering and the desires, there is no peace. It's one way or the other. Okay. Kabir always said, Prem ki gali ati sakri. It's, very, it's a one-way street. Mm -hmm. Either you exist or Paramatma exists. Mm -hmm. You cannot have both. So the choice is yours. You want to live the life of desires or you want to go through the Sakri Gali, give up the desires and raise your Mumukshatva, which is the intense desire to meet with the consciousness. So one is Manushatva, second is Mumukshatva, and the third one that's important is the Dharma Shrama where you actually listen to the dharma. Now you might say that there are a lot of temples out there. There are a lot of mandirs and gurudwaras and churches and, and, and you said it's not enough. It's wherever you do all those things, there is still deficiency of dharma. All those places dharma is absent. So to find a real dharma, where dharma which is pure, coming from the soul, without any desires attached, to get the pure dharma is also a rare thing nowadays. And more so than at the time of Mahavir. <coughs> he says a pure atma talking and giving you the sermon without having any personal desires is very rare also. So three things combined puts you right here. And if you still have desires, then you're on the wrong track. <coughs> the track has to be chosen by you. So that's the importance of path of Mahavir. How many Jains really know this? Right, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So then, desires to objects, material world, and desire for Mumushakra, how that is different? Agreed. The desire for the material world and the desire to be on the path of Mumukshatva is very subtle difference. Because the desire for both, something that you have not acquired. The regular desires, the routine material desires, starts with a point where you don't have something that you want, right? And then you make the efforts, X amount of efforts, one day, two days, five days, or two years, and you ultimately get what you wanted. You get what you wanted, and ultimately your desire is fulfilled. This is a different kind of desire. Desire of the Mumukshatva is to find out what you have rather than acquire that you don't have. There is a very subtle difference. is to find your original state where there is nothing to acquire anymore. And that's where the subtle difference comes. That's why they say meditation is non-doership. Everything else that you desire for, doership is needed. In Mumukshatva, all you have to do is give up the old methods of acquiring that you were applying, that starting with something not having and performing a task and achieving something, this you are buying an being an observer of the inner state of mind and <clears throat> observing that your mind was in acquisition mode of continuously running mode and acquiring mode and holding mode and automatically you reach to a spot where you say all my desires are fulfilled I do not have any desires left these are the desires of a desire this is only one desire which you fulfill and you have no desires left again that will seem like a desire but when you analyze at, in your meditative state, just an intense desire to find your <coughs> own self. At that level, the source of satisfaction just springs. The same satisfaction that you were trying to get by a Mercedes or BMW or whatever you wanted, and then at the end you had the satisfaction. In this state of giving up all the desires, Ultimately, the joy of life comes out. And that's what Mahavir says, this is the pulse of life. Because you are broadening your desire of merging into a stream where immediately whatever is in front of you, you don't have desire for anymore. 
So mumukshatva is intense desire to find out your own nature. You're not acquiring anything. Whatever you're trying to acquire, so-called, but the language has to be used for the people who are not there yet. So the intense desire or mumukshatva is only the language. In fact, in the meditation, you're not trying to do anything. You're giving up all the desires, but that intense desire to find your own self, which is already there, you don't have to do anything. The soul itself is self-contained. It does not want anything. It does not need anything. And to, when you reach that state, you become the king. When you want something from the life, life is a king and you are a beggar. When you reach to your soul, you are the king and the life is a beggar. So that's what Mahavir says, when the lust for life, <laughs> and when he says lust for life is lust for living. And why do we want to live? So that the pleasures of life can keep coming to us. So he says, in that lust for life, I get blinded so much. And that's why I fight the death so intensely, because my desire for life is making me fight against the death. The whole cycle goes on. My whole purpose of the life becomes stopping the death as much as possible. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. So that the whole life becomes one big mistake. All you were trying to prevent the death. I want to live as long as possible. But we never ask ourselves why. We start making money. The first paycheck comes in and then the second and the third and the checks keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and our desires keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger but we never ask what are we trying to accumulate money for mm -hmm. the whole purpose gets lost in the methods <coughs> and the desires keep getting bigger and keep changing the focuses so it's the desire that is wrong but mumukshatva is only your intense desire to find yourself the source of everything the that Lao Tse calls it Tao. The Tao is nameless. He says, I'm forced to name it, so I'm calling it Tao. But it's <coughs> nameless. It is sourceless. It's been always there. That elixir, the Amrit of life, where there is no death. The life that you know, there is opposite death. So in the duality, you are suffering. You have one thing that you love. That's why you hate another thing that's going to take that away. But ultimately, the elixir of life, the amrut, that is, that is possible to reach there, that you're missing out. And once you reach that, that's the state where there is no opposite. There is no opposite of the amrit. Amrit is amrit. You are in a perpetual state where there is no life and there is no death. So Mahavir says, I'm giving up this lust for the life so that whatever comes, I am okay with that. Whatever is happening in front of me, if I want anything else in a very subtle level, even if whatever is in front of me, if I want something else, meaning a desire, I am not enjoying the present moment that is coming in front of me. Right? And when I'm not enjoying, I want to be somewhere else. For Mahavir, that's the expansion of the ego. And in direct way, it is the performation, performing of the violence. So accepting everything is totally, whatever life is bringing in front of me, 100% is acceptable because what is life after all? When he accepts life as it is, he becomes bigger than the life. Whatever life brings in front of me, he's okay. It is not different. Non-violence of Mahavir is not different than what we call Tathata. Uh, Buddha called Tathata. Tathata. Ultimately, the one who reaches to that state is also called Tathata. But ultimate meaning of Tathata <coughs> is total acceptance of life. Whenever you have something else that you desire, that means you're running after life. But when whatever life brings in front of you, that's when the joy of your existence, your pure mind in its pristine state, it just becomes an observer of whatever is happening. In that state, you reach to the state of bliss, where there is nothing but a permanent peace, where everything that is happening, Krishna says, Shri Krishna Sharanam Mama, just bow down to me 100%. And that's what he means, that 
this consciousness takes you over in that infinite pool of existence where nothing else once you have have the infinite existence what else do you want whatever you get from the life cannot give you that that's why uh, the program had said that people ask buddha what did you gain by doing all these things buddha says i did not gain anything but i did get rid of my anger my anxiety my suffering my fears and the fear biggest of all the fear of death so reaching to this elixir of life the amrut of life makes you fearless because fear for what what is the worst fear that can happen is the death so mahavir says i'm not only giving up the lust for life but also desire to stay alive so even death cannot hurt me whenever that comes it comes whenever it does not come i'm not going to run after it either so jivesna and mrutyeshna we talked about eros and thanatos where the two words coined by sigmund freud freud says eros is the lust for life and thanatos is hatred for life that leads people to the suicide because they say well there is nothing left in life so they want to kill themselves but mahavir says thanatos is not as superficial as freud had thought obviously thinking of mahavir and freud differs because mahavir has gone deeper because when you have thanatos when you are gripped by the suicidal thoughts ultimately you are making your desire out of life so concentrated on one girl or one money object one position that ultimately that suicidal ideation is also desire from life if i wanted such and such girl <laughs> and i cannot have her i'm going to die so what does that mean ultimately you want that girl so you wanted something from the life so in a freud's thanatos is nothing but another way of expression of eros so thanatos of mahavir and mahavir has suggested there is something called santhara santhara mahavir permitted people the munis to die on their own where 90 days he gave and 90 days is a long time if somebody's lust for life has trickled down to nothing has no desire for life left in a very intellectual and a very highly developed <coughs> spiritual state of existence where life or death does not mean anything to him then he has allowed santhara for his jain munis because he would not expect grihastha to reach to that level but he said jain munis are allowed to do santhara santhara is 90 days you do not take any food and it's with total awareness and this is not suicide suicide is done in impulsive way in one second you commit suicide but you cannot remain in that state if somebody is trying to jump off and you try to save him and they tell him that okay stock market has gone up now you don't have to jump then he will stop jumping <laughs> that's fine <laughs> so his moment in a moment things change in the morning you are trying to kill someone i mean you trying to kill yourself in the evening you trying to kill somebody else you know so that is the state of mind of the people who trying to commit suicide that's not what he says he says 90 days body will survive whatever reserves of the food you have you have a long way to really think about it so this act cannot be committed in an impulsive way so it was a very pristine state that he had offered so santhara but people who followed mahavir could not understand all these things all they said that mahavir fasted so all we can do is fast so that we can reach to the state that he had reached but it's again we are action oriented so we are bringing ourselves down to the action level the subtle aspects of the mind you cannot understand until you meditate and you experience your own movements of your mind how the desires are acting so all these things are in front of us for us to explore we have manushyatva all we have to have is mumukshatva and we already have dharma shravan going on in this room all the time so all we have to do is take the path and then we can go somewhere then things can happen so all these things are important and the desires is what creates takes us off the path 
the importance that we give it doesn't matter whether somebody is rich or poor ultimately whatever importance we give to the life whether it is for one penny or one dollar or for million dollars how does it matter whether the clinton wants to grab the next seat of throne obama wants to be reelected again at that level or you want to make an extra buck that you have you want to double whether you have a single dollar in your pocket desire is the same the all you have to do is multiplication you multiply 10 million times and it becomes somebody else's desire but the bottom line mahavir says desire is a desire <laughs> mulla nasruddin was very famous one time he was caught by four robbers on the way very lonely street and he's caught by the four robbers but mulla would not give up he fought really hard to the point that the four if there were not four people it they could have lost their life mulla was really giving his really best he fought and fought and fought but finally it did happen what happened there were four people so they really subdued him and they started looking at his pockets they got one penny <laughs> <laughs> say mulla come on we know you i know you are stingy but for one penny really you wanted to ready to die because we were four us we could have killed you and you gave us this much fight he says that doesn't matter i don't want strangers to know my personal finances <laughs> <laughs> so even one penny can be a reason to fight <laughs> so this is shows how much lust for life we have it doesn't matter yeah, most of us do that <laughs> not so mula. whether there is a bikari trying to hold on to what he has or a multi millionaire trying to hold on to whatever he has uh, who was that uh, i forgot the famous uh, the richest guy one of the richest guy uh, and he died uh, andrew carnegie he died with 10 billion dollars in those days in 40s and 50s and the guy who was writing his autobiography he asked him that you must be dying a very happy man otherwise how you know 10 billion dollar in those days so you know what he says no i wanted 100 billion dollars <laughs> it's a shame that i'm dying with only 10 billion dollars <laughs> so imagine and that's how it shows that even at that level desires stay alive we have to realize the nature of desire the nature of desire is to move you from where you are and where you are is where your nature is the buddha says jala se ki jala se ki machli like i said before jaise jala se ki machli maar ke fande mein tadafti hai aise aadmi ki aatma sansar mein tadafti hai jala sa is water what is the life of a fish right from the birth from the egg level to the last moment of its life it has known nothing but water now the importance of water it cannot know if you ask fish what is water he says i don't know i am just here that's it until it gets lured by the worm that is wiggling in the fisherman's stick and it goes there it tries to grab it gets caught up and caught in the fisherman's net and now it gets caught in the all the crooked narrow passages of the fisherman's net and wherever it says i'm going to do this i will escape this I'm, and it's it's fighting for its survival and now it misses and that's exactly what we are doing we are away from your our own nature and the desires are what keeping us and we don't know the way we don't know the way to get back and unfortunately we are the only one who can know the way back once somebody ask buddha say how do i unlock the knots of my head he says you are the one who created the <laughs> knots so you do undo the knot exactly the way you tied the knots in the first place no one knows how you tied your knots how would they even buddha cannot put you into enlightenment only you can reach to the enlightenment because you trace exactly how illusion of the life made you run after the objects of the pleasure what happened the last time that object of the pleasure where did it take you what kind of sufferings you went through and what happened after all you smell a rose 
Does the rose go in your body? No. All you do is smell the rose, right? And then you put the rose away. <clears throat> of course, the fragrance goes in your body. The molecules, the chemical goes in. But the next time you breathe out, even that is gone. What is left with you? Just the memory. Memory is nothing but your thoughts. Now it becomes part of your mind. What to do with that memory is up to you. It is transient. But to keep it alive and keep it long, keep it forever, it's up to you. Yesterday I was at a party and we were talking about <coughs> my son moving, right? Chanel moving to Texas. So I have a lady, uh, she was there, you know, she was said, no, 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 I cannot do that. I would really die if my son moves out and I think. So I said, no, it's not so bad. He said, no, no, you say that only to, you know, so that it looks good in front of everybody. Inside, I know you're suffering. I said, really? I'm not suffering. <laughs> it's hard no, to, she wants you to suffer. Uh, exactly. <laughs> it's hard to convince you. But he said, no, 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 that state is not possible. This is just make up stories about all these things. My son has moved out to, uh, where did she want to? Neptune, which is... It's part of New Jersey somewhere, right? Yeah, it's yeah, South yeah. Jersey. Yeah, yeah. South Jersey, and he says, I'm crying every single day. I cannot sustain myself, and he says that. No matter how much glitter you put on this and that. I said, no. I, I said, I was upset, truthfully speaking, when he decided to move, but I got enlightened by one sentence of my wife. Out of said, ultimately, what do you want? Mm -hmm. Ultimately, you want him to be happy, right? Said, if that's where his happiness, do you want to be... A, in, in his the way, way? In his way, yeah. To, to block his happiness? I said, no. He said, that's fine, so let go. <laughs> it was so easy for her to say, but then I realized mm -hmm. that was a great lesson that I learned. That ultimately, to give up our objects or peoples or situations and context, all that is nothing but sansar. And sansar is here. It's not outside. That rose did not know that it was going to stay in my head forever. Shanil does not know how I'm going to hold on to his relationship with, with him and all that forever. So it's up to me how to realize the transientness of the nature of all the relationships, whether it's a rose or your son or whatever it is, your money or whatever. That transientness is the nature. Buddha says that is mind is chanchal. Mind meaning sansar. Sansar is chanchal. You don't have to hate sansar because hating sansar becomes the hatred for the world. But that's another thing that people didn't understand. The yogis and all that, they give up the sansar and run to the Himalayas and all that. They are giving up at the material level because they are living at material level. They don't have this subtle knowledge of the, that the attachments are at the mind level. The mind is the problem and your mind is your mind. Whether you go to the Himalayas, then you become the owner of your hut, owner of your langoti, mm -hmm. owner of your shishyas. Oh, this, my shishya was stolen by this. Where is sansar? Is back there again. So sansar is at our mind level. Okay. Yes. But isn't that a desire that you want your son to be happy? That's why you are... No, letting... it's a knowledge. The knowledge, again, see, desire of the desires is the knowledge of the self. When you know your own soul, and that way you know the consciousness, how it works. It's the understanding. See, desire is a word that you use only for the people who are still living at the material level. At the meditation level, it's not the desire. It is the knowledge. Keval Gnan, Kevali. Like awareness, you mean? Awareness, awareness, exactly. So, Mahavir calls the ultimate state, Jains call ultimate states, is the Keval Gnan. Keval Gnan is not knowledge. Keval Gnan means only knowledge exists. You are so fully aware. You are so aware of the transientness of the nature. What happens to the desire? It falls by itself. So, ultimately, if people who meditate on a regular basis, we don't talk about desire to reach there. There is no reaching there. There is no desire there. Just become fully aware. And that awareness you sharpen up and you reach to the point that everything else which is transitory becomes just that. So Buddha says, sansar is chanchal. It's just the fact. He doesn't say is anything to be hated. He doesn't say anything running away. It is there. 
the phenomenon is always there. How can you fight? Go to sleep at night and say, I don't want to have a dream. I have people who come. I have two brothers. They are heavily into the spirituality. And they are mesmerized by these sadhus and all that. One of them ended up going to the southern part of India and met one of the sadhvi in an ashram. And one of the sadhu who lives there, and he says, uh, because this kid, you know, is like 21, 22, but he has a very good desire for desire, but it's just a desire to be in, to reach this state, right? So he had some pain in his leg. So his Mahatma that he was staying at the ashram, he says, why don't you go to this ashram? She will talk to you about it, this and that. So once she reaches the sadhvi, he says that, listen, everything happens for a reason. Everything happens, the, the, the reason your leg hurt, and they try to, the same answers they give to everybody, right? So you are here for a reason. There is a purpose behind you, behind all these things. That the pain that happened in your leg, what that was there, always a purpose, as if they know everything, right? So, they are so he's very impressed. And there is another sadhu who lives in that ashram. And then, uh, so the, one morning he wakes up and he says, he tells the sadhu that you were in my dreams, you know. So the sadhu says, dreams? What dreams? You know. So they make, think that, they have no dreams, you know. So the people who reached to that level, they are not supposed to have any dreams. So now this kid is walking around with the idea that the fact that I am having the dreams, there is something wrong with me. So I want to be desired. I want to have a desire. I don't want to have dreams. But the dreams come from your interactions and your wrong thoughts and your wrong attachments and the sansar. He doesn't want to do anything about it. I want to fight the desires. I mean, I want to fight the dreams. So. What I'm saying is, when you're fighting the desires, it's your own illusions that you are fighting. So, the desire to be knowledgeable is only opening up your inside light of awareness. And the desire fall by themselves. Again, if you remember what I had put, the desires is ignorance. Desire is darkness. What do you do with the darkness? How can you fight the darkness? You come inside the room and there is darkness. Do you pick it up and throw it away? No. So the desire to get rid of the desires is not a desire. It's just to know its nature. That's it. And that knowledge of the nature is within us. So all you have to do is turn the lamp on. There is a positive action you can do to turning the lamp on. The same way the positive action you're doing is meditation. That's the slightest of the action that you're doing. But ultimately what is happening is exponentially a lot more than just sitting 15-20 minutes in meditation. Whatever is happening is inside. You're becoming aware. Every single action that you're performing is performing, you, you are a doer, is ignorance. When you perform an action with the full awareness is done at the Buddha level. And that's what Vijayabhai says, expressing opinion is just a talk. Playing a role is fully aware. What is the difference between the opinion and, and, and role playing? Awareness. So when you are continuously aware of what you're doing, you become Buddha. So again, you, in a traditional material language, you call it desire. But to know your own self is a curiosity. Curiosity is not a desire, just to find out how this thing works. That's all. So, we need Mumukshatva is the curiosity. You see, the child has a curiosity. He wants to find out. When I was a kid, I wanted, always wanted to know what is at the end of the universe. Now, nobody told me to think that way, but the desire is just curiosity came from my mind. So, there is a very subtle difference between curiosity to know and a desire to know. Desire is very sthul, very hard and rigid. Because we are using desire in a very hard way to acquire material things. So that's material. But the curiosity is beautiful. That's like opening up your horizons. Curiosity to know something that nobody knows. And maybe something that only you can know. Or maybe there is some way. I don't know. You are opening into an unknown territory. That's the field of a gay. It's, a, it's a, a state of expansion. Curiosity exactly. is a state of expansion. Expansion and experience. So it's a beautiful state. So curiosity of a child, we kill it by telling him this is what it is. We tell him you're a Jain. I had another <laughs> pharmacist the other day, you know, 
we had a beautiful child was born and uh, we were talking that look at the world is the way it's going we feel guilty that you know the child is born and what he or she will have to go through all these things that's going on in the world and we feel so bad i said the worst <laughs> damage that is done to a kid is by the parents he says what do you mean i said i understand you will be you will be you know kind of shocked assaulted but that's the reality he says what do you mean i said well the first thing we tell them that you are they are christians i said they will tell you are christian how do you know to be a christian is not easy because to be a christian is like to be a jesus following jesus is one thing but to be a jesus is another thing so as soon as the child is born you tell them that you are a jain or you are a christian you are a hindu so their his curiosity is gone then he will never raise that question again that who am i but children don't take it for granted these well, days we hope me. not yeah. we hope not yeah. that's what i'm saying all the consciousness is rising little by little another 100 years or 1000 years later we'll have buddhas walking around everywhere we hope so right. but then we will understand the stupidities that we are committing on a day to day basis all the acts are which are committed under the desired state desired state is what it's an illusion is nothing but regular man like thinking and that's why we have to raise a bow yes uh desire sort of awareness and the roles and opinions it starts the moment you become sansaric right if you become like in a muni mm-hmm. jain jainism mm-hmm. muni mm-hmm. Or, or in a catholic priest right and you're following celibacy if you don't have a child right. if you don't have a son right. you don't have to worry about his moving taxes right. <laughs> if you don't have uh, you know wife mm-hmm. you don't have mm-hmm. to worry about her okay Agreed. or vice versa right right so it starts with becoming sansaric but do you think that that gets rid of the desires though uh no 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 that's that's <laughs> the next part like uh, you know in a catholicism or in a swami narayan right once the pope or the head of the church or a temple goes away still internally there is a lot of you know, conflicts lot of business of goes around lot of sansar goes around there is a hierarchy fighting right. who is superior who is inferior and then who teaches the knowledge and then i as a right. muni i teach the knowledge to you you become inferior i am superior correct. where is all that correct. that's still there it's, it's besides i had one nun uh, and i had one uh, patient she's uh, next door neighbor american lady and she knew a nun she had a intense desire to have a child <laughs> and yet at some and the moment in a impulsive moment she decided to become a nun yeah. and then all her life she was almost 54 55 by the time he says i lost my whole life because i wanted to have a child <laughs> so a lot of times munis are also created out of looking around right. and that's nothing but your ego that okay you know in amdavad all these vargaudas with a you know when the somebody becomes jain sadhu oh, yeah. it's like a big celebration yeah, crores of rupees are thrown and, and and this and that and all that all that is for what somebody who is becoming supposed to become a simple minded <laughs> and these people become muni and i have my mom was telling me that there are sadhus <coughs> jain munis they own bungalows mm-hmm. in the name of their brothers or sisters and where did that money come from mm-hmm. from the donations to the temples and all those things so don't think that marrying or non marrying cuts down the desires it's more on the contrary it's more at the head on the contrary it is better to stay in this traditional mm-hmm. sansar know your desires the same thing about these two kids they approach me they say should we get married or not we thinking of they actually coming from a very big family they want to take sanyas and they are only only confided with me mm. i said you know this is not right i said if you so i said the the fact that you raising a question see if you are a bal brahmachari by birth no matter what supposing you acquired the total awareness in this life and you are born like like buddha even if he got married they realize this is there is nothing final outcome going to come out of this and you give up is one thing or some people are born that when they never want to get married at all and that's perfect no, that if is it is okay. my choice then yes exactly but again inner state of mind you will never know there are people in in uh, which was that state laos or which country is that uh or vietnam or one of the countries now they are banning now you need a certificate to become a sadhu buddha sadhu thailand. because there are thailand, thailand is something so there are like th- oh yeah thailand yeah, yeah, yeah. there are 20 nice million buddhist monks there right. 
and they said <laughs> because they don't have to work. Yeah, because Mopadma. they're coming from such a poor family. So they have all the food coming in. They don't have to do anything. Oh. Keep teaching this and that and all that. So now if they require a license. They, the government <laughs> decides whether you can be a monk or not. So, life. <laughs> so spirituality is very subtle. Sansar is difficult, boss, then spiritual the, life. <laughs> the dharma that we talk about is very pristine. It does not differentiate whether you are a muni or not. Whether There is no one method you can reach that. Only you know your own method and you follow your own path. Yeah, only, only the snake knows its legs. Only you will know. So that's why knowledge of yourself is the most important thing. Even in meditation, I... I Practice for 15 minutes, some say I do it for 40 minutes. That's, <laughs> yes, and there's no value. What you did inside, even for two minutes, is more important. That's what I'm saying. So desires to the outside world, we should abolish. We should take the best advantage of Manushatva, Mumukshatva, and the Dharma Shravan. So much for today. मोटा बगना साधु तो कल संसार थे इसके पिता करवा मटे थे लोग That is cowardness That is not साधुनेस That is cowardness संसार थे कंटाडी नहीं बदल नहीं Running away from responsibility Cowardness Yeah अपने करो वेज करे Exactly and they will It's natural right You know discipline technique अरे पूजारी और तो worst They say oh bring your child उसके इन्हें जनों यहाँ पे क्या नाम आता है? बैप्टिज्म क्या करें जो? So that is stamp, stamp कैसे इंटरव्यू चाहिए?